Well, as every year, uh, the same as this year, the yearlings start to heat up. This time of year, we start to get a real good look at them. Now, we want to get drone videos out to you. I had uh, talked to Jason, both Jasons, a little bit about doing one Wednesday in uh, Northfield. There will be some horses missing from it, some castrations, some horses that we wanted to, we had blistered. And I'll, I'll be over there Tuesday, so I guess they could be late additions, but for right now, I'm going to leave them off. The roster for training on Wednesday. The plan is maybe Wednesday at Northfield Park and back Saturday, weather permitting. Oh, it's on my phone. Weather permitting in Ontario. Soft plan for this week. So I want to go through all the two-year-olds with you. Um, talk about where they are, if they have any issues, what issues I have with them, uh, if they were castrated or not. Maybe how fast they've been, and um, which. It's kind of useless information at this point. They've all kind of been between 2.45 and 3 minutes. There's a couple of stragglers that are still trying to put it all together, but that happens. And then I guess if we look at the horses that were stragglers last year trying to put it all together, I'm not really that concerned at all. So we'll start with AC Swan. As promised, a little late, but they're on their way back. They're going to be coming to Northfield on their way back. They're coming uh, from uh, Illinois to Northfield this week. AC Swan, Ali Baba, and per Lucky, Jim's been doing a great job. He told me today he's ready to qualify. So if he's ready to qualify, if they get them back quickly, we may even qualify that horse Wednesday afternoon at Northfield Park. We'll see. So AC Swan on her way back, uh, on her way to Northfield Park. Activation has been very, very good. Now the only dig on him, oh, I haven't been to train, but Jason said he bit at a couple of people the other day and he does want to get him gelded. So if he is not castrated on Wednesday yet, he'll train. If he's been castrated uh, tomorrow or Tuesday, obviously he can't. So we'll see how that plays out. But this is a Father Patrick Colt that has looked very, very good. Just going to, as I said, uh, there's a couple of non-starters. Biting, kicking, uh, kicking on or off the track. Just overall rudeness and ignorance. Then when you factor in the sire, I don't want to see any... Uh, attitude shortcomings from Father Patrick's. If I do, immediately they will be castrated. We did it with memory and imagination. Uh, we've had them long enough now to understand. When they start having those rude attitudes in January, uh, a lot of horses, they'll dissipate, right? They'll dissipate a little bit. But the Father Patrick's, they, don't, they didn't anyway last year. Enzo was a, was a sticking point with me. How he just seemed, I gave him a lot of a rope. Uh, I gave him a wide berth. And I don't really like how it ended up. So from now on, at least for 2023, um, for right now, any of these attitude shortcomings where they pin their ears a lot or bite or kick or just be rude, it will end in castration immediately with them and affection, uh, not affection, sorry, activation will be next up. Um, affection is the next horse up, man. I love this Philly. I want to talk about a Father Patrick that went from ignorant and rude. That's a Philly though. Went from ignorant rude to just always having her ears up and pounding them. Looked good again the other day. Amy said she steers kind of weird, but man, can she ever trot? She blew by them, uh, picked off Jason, I think, at the wire. From where at my vantage point, I thought she did. Uh, but again, I was watching my wife, not Jason. So uh, it doesn't really matter. She looked great training. Very, very happy with um, affection. Very happy with her. Ali Baba, uh, she'll be landing this week. You likely won't see, unless they get here tomorrow. You likely won't see these horses in sets on Wednesday, but they will be at Northfield Park. Antilles Hanover, likable horse. Man, this horse does everything. He does remind me of, of an Austral Hanover. In fact, he's doing his work better than Austral did last year. The difference was Austral doesn't really hit himself. Touched his knees a little bit last year. No big deal. This guy's kind of built to touch himself, and he does. But, man, he just works right through it. Just a, a, a very, very likable horse. He has been castrated. This is a guy that struck Lauren, the first week he was there, first day he was there. So he is, uh, he is, uh, will be castrated, or has been castrated and will be training on Wednesday. Uh, Arson, Jason loves his horse. Jason McGinnis goes with him quite a bit. Um, very happy with what I've seen from him. He's looked very good. Blanton's Blue, now Jason Merriman went with him the other day and said, can we put the hobbles on him? I don't have a problem with the hobbles, but I never had a problem with Blanton's Blue all the, either. So I'll go with Blanton's Blue with the hobbles on Wednesday. We'll see how he goes. Born to Dance should be back from his castration. Uh, he was castrated, but I think he should be in training form for Wednesday. We'll see. Cherahola, I think one of the biggest movers of last week. 
uh, was Chirahola. Very, very happy with what I saw from her the other day. Went from a filly that you had to make work, kind of looked a little rough around the edges to a filly that actually understood or starting to understand her work and liked it. I was very happy with the what I would consider to be the start of a, a considerable transformation for her. Very happy with what I've seen from Chirahola. Cowboy by the Sea did his work well and continues to do his work well. I didn't make things easy on him. I know he would rather not have flip-flops on but I want them on to keep him sound, make sure he's good for the rest of the season. And we kept letting his hobbles out. So he keeps stretching into his hobbles, which is tiring for him, but it should be. This is a time of year when you do get tired. I want to see you tired. So next time you're not tired. So every time he, you know, every time he stretches into his hobbles and gets a little tired in training, I'm just going to keep letting them out and making him tired next time. And that should make a much stronger horse through the spring into the summer. But very happy with him. Did you know is back going now? This is a filly that had OCD surgery. She did not make the sets this week. She may make a set. Depending on how she tr she may train this week. And depending on how she trains, you may see her in a set on Sunday. Um, no guarantees. But you may see her there. Uh, don't talk about Bruno. Has been very, very good. And has looked very good for quite a while now. Very happy with Bruno. Drebin looked great this week, last week. Really have him going well. Danny gets along with this horse and loves Drebin. Both those horses have looked great. Easy on the turns. Was a winner yesterday. These sets were rolling right along yesterday. I think this set won a mile in 246. But I think the Drebin set won a mile in 243. Those horses were rolling along and looked very good. We're probably going to stay from 240 to 250 till the end of January. So very happy with the way these guys looked. Electric line made a couple of breaks in the straightaways, but I think a head pull is needed on this guy. You know, Jason had said, can we pull his hobbles in? I don't want to make it easy on them. It isn't about making it easy on them in January. It's about allowing them to understand their work and grow into themselves and mature and get strong. That's that's what January, February, March, really, their whole two-year-old year is about, but most definitely in January. So Electric Line uh, has been doing its work well, made a break down the backstretch, but he said he's running in. We're going to put a head pull on Electric Line this week and see how he trains. But lots of speed there, lots to offer. Flash Fly, I, I really thought that Flash Fly was a little bit behind, easy in the turns the other day in those horses, but I, I ended up moving her to the front down the backstretch. She went a mile in... Uh, she went a mile in uh, 243 and looked very, very, very good. Really impressed. She is a bit of a cow in the burn, always biting at people and looking at people, you know, like she wants to do some damage. You can go in her stall and she got her ears up. You know, she just got a chip on her shoulder, both her and insider trading and gold bug. Maybe it's a green shoe thing, but I'm um, not mean in any way, but she happened to grab somebody by the shoulder walking by. It wouldn't be that shocking at feed time. That's just how, how she is. But um, a really, really nice filly. Uh, just looks amazing on the track. Um, George of the Jungle trained great the other day again. Looks very good. This is our muscle mass colt. Mario loves him. He goes them quite a bit. Likes this horse. Gold Bug Hanover looked good again the other day. This is Locatelli's sister, the Green Shoe's sister. And she looked good again training the other day. She'll be going Wednesday for sure. Uh, great bet. Look good again. This is another guy, just a little rough around the edges, a little dull looking. And as I said, myself and the bar, are great bet. There's about five or six of them in this list. You know, we got them some vitamin supplements and just work, 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 work. They're athletes. They'll come around. And great bet definitely falls into that cat category. Big, strong bugger. Like what I've seen with this guy. Green tea, uh, another one of the biggest movers of the week, has gone from just a sour little bugger. Uh, and we didn't geld him, but just a sour little bugger, and there was a week where I just put a ton of work on his plate, and he did not like it. But two weeks later, fast forward to two weeks later, he looked amazing training the other day. and looked really, really good. His ears up. Again, sometimes you just need a little trip to the principal's office once in a while uh, to come around, and green tea certainly looked good. Gypsy Hill, I thought he'd need another week with that curb. Um, Jason said, no, he's been really, really good. I think we'll put him in a slower set, but this horse, one of our top Ohio bred prospects is Gypsy Hill. He looks very, very good. Hallie in the clouds was amazing the other day. Also, Amy went with her. Now, Amy went with her the first time and said, oh, can't get along with her. She's lazy. She made breaks. She doesn't want to do her work. Put a little work on it. Put a little work, hard labor into her for a few days and put some heavier, uh, weights on her up front, put two ounce toe weights on her. And then I went with her. She was awesome. James went with her. She was awesome. Amy went with her the other day and said, what a difference. Oh, my God. She goes, what a change. She was amazing. So very, very happy with Hallie in the Clouds. I'm fancy-like. 
Looks like she might be turning the corner. Trained the other day with her head down, her hobbles out, her ears up. Now, I still had to pick at her and work at her, but I was kind of bottled up in the two hole and they spread out far wide coming out of the turn. I ducked her to the rail and I hit her a couple of swats and she just shot right through. And then two steps after the wire, she was like five lengths ahead of them. I like that. I, I, I like what I saw from my fancy like the other day. I had some real concerns that this filly was just going to regress, 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 and then we were just going to move her. Uh, somewhere else, but like what I saw from my fancy like the other day, insider trading continues to be very good again. Good the other day training, very happy with her. International spy was very good. Now, James is pretty protective of this guy. He had to go uh, watch his son play hockey, so I went with him the other day. I thought the horse was very, very good. Oh, excuse me. I thought, uh, I thought that horse was exceptionally good training the other day. Irresistible son, Joe Cramp. So the Cram family, I believe they're from uh, one of my favorite places to race. So I'm not mistaken. Forgive me, Joe. But I believe the... Ah, what's the fair over here as you cross the border? Uh, giant fair. Uh, one of my favorite fairs anyway. Um, Joe, I believe, is from there originally. And um, good horseman. And he's been helping us ride. You know, very lucky that some of these older guys... Uh, chip in at Northfield Park, and Jason's got them riding in the morning. It's so another gentleman, uh, Eric. I didn't get to introduce myself to him the other day. I was in and out, running around quick. Him and his wife moved here to tra to race horses, and he's been riding for us in the morning too. Seems to be really quiet in the bike, so I'd put him on some horse in the jog cart. I'd put him on some horses Wednesday. We'll see how that works out. Eric, I believe his name is, seems like a nice guy. I'll, I'll introduce myself a little bit better this week. Um, but very happy with the way Joe went with the Irresistible Son. He said to me, he goes, he goes, I love this horse. I said, no, I love him too. He goes, no, I bid on him. He said, you got him. He said, you went quite a bit higher than I was ready to go on him. But I, I really, really like this horse. And uh, he trained him the other day and said, yeah, just a, a really nice colt. So Irresistible Son was good again. Jayport Beach Boy uh, was great training here. Johnny, Johnny, uh, Johnny went with Jayport Beach Boy. He said he was very good the other day. Levesque in action. Another one of those horses, a little, little light little uh, frail, you know, it needs to be shined up and worked a little bit more, but she's frail enough where you can't put too much work into her, just enough. So lots of feed, lots of workout. I've been talking to the girls about switching your feed around. Um, so we usually feed a can of feed in the morning, like a coffee can, a Folgers coffee can of feed in the morning with hay cubes, uh, a can in the afternoon and two at night. Pretty general feeding regimen for, for most barns. Um, if they start eating less than four, it's concerning to me. So what we'll try and do is mid-morning, maybe feed them another small lunch portion. And we have a few horses on that, and, and Lebecca in action is one of them. Doing her work well. I'm happy, happy with her, but she is maybe 100 pounds under underweight. Need to really keep an eye on that. Can't feed her too much work if she's not eating everything. So there's that, that uh, happy medium. You know, put enough work into her where it doesn't affect her appetite and then use her appetite to be able to put her in a position to do more work. So that's where we're at with um, Lebec in action. But I was very happy with her the other day uh, and so was Joey who went with her. Lonely Lakewood's been awesome training. Touching his jacks, I said to Johnny, we'll change his shoes a little bit this week. We'll get him out of there. Uh, but man, what a, what a, just a, a really, really nice horse he's turned into be. Really like him. One of our, our top prospects, and he's a father, Patrick. Now, he was castrated because he was originally, but his attitude is spot on, just perfect right now. Lover's Play made some breaks the other day, which is rare. Scott usually goes with Lover's Play. I think I put myself on Lover's Play this week. want to get a look at this filly. Um, really one of those horses that was a filler. What I mean by that is we, we had a price range for a, a trotting filly that we were looking for. And there's a number of horses on that list, and Lover's Play was on that list. Fit the price range, fit the profile. Very happy to get her. And uh, she's been, uh, you know, happily doing her work fantastic the last two months. Made some breaks the other day. Just trying to figure out why. It just didn't seem to be, uh, it seemed to be abnormal. And when you're looking at gaps in their schedule, weather changes, her being a filly, I suspect I know the problem. Maybe she cramped up a little bit. But I'm going to get a look at her on uh, Tuesday. Really nice filly. Mick Paisley's doing her work well. Melanie's Michaela is a horse that's doing it better, but I need to see her continue to do it better, right? Um, Jason gets along. Jason Merriman gets along well with her, and I believe he'll be going with her again this week. I'm going to be watching her very, very closely over the next month or so just to make sure that she's making the proper, um, the proper moves forward. That I would like to see and need to see from her. There's always that list of horses, you know. How are they going? Are they going to make it? 
Are they keepers? Are they movers? Uh, and not to say that this filly's a mover in any way, but I would like to see her come forward, um, progress in, in, a, in a positive way over the next month. She's doing, she's done well the last little while, but I need to see more. Um, where are we at here? Mel Gibswan, this horse, quietly top of the class. Uh, everybody goes him. He's had a number of different drivers, and they've all said, man, this is a beautiful horse. I saw him in the bath rack the other day. He is gorgeous. What a beautiful horse. So Mel Gibswan um, and Widespread Panic have been fantastic on the Indiana side. Uh, the other guy, uh, Tactical Mound, or no, that was the Philly, uh, Mounds for All, looks good. Going to need to see him come forward a little bit also. We'll talk about him in a minute. But Mel Gibson has been awesome. Memory and Imagination was castrated. I expect he'll be very good in the near future. Daryl got along really well with him, and he's going to go with him again this Wednesday. Militant has been great. This is a six-pack Colt out of uh, the sister, the brother to Charmed Life. Looks really, really good on the track. Very, very smart Colt. Um, Mounds for all, as I said. Just need to see him do a little bit more work. I'm happy with him. I'm not disappointed. Uh, he's not he's not ignorant. He's a little bit lazy, but that's fine. Long time between now and July for him to pick up. Uh, myself in the in this bar, this is a guy that just he we're, as I said to to the Carrie, who takes care of him the other day. Just keep blistering him. Uh, I do believe he's he's one of those horses that could be an EPM horse. So we're going to continue to keep him on uh, medication for EPM Baycox uh, for the next little while and see how he comes. I just think work. And we saw this with Procrastinator. We saw this with a number of horses that were young horses trying to get their gait. It takes time sometimes. But uh, happy with his attitude. His attitude seems to be good. It seems to be in check. He seems to be moving forward. So we'll see. We'll see how uh, myself and this bar progresses over the next little while. No chance in Hill. Another top prospect for our Ohio group. Man, every year, um, you know, there's optimism this time of year when it comes to the babies. And yes, there was two or three or four fillies that fooled me last year heading into June. Um, doesn't happen all the time, but it does happen. And when it comes to our Colts, fillies, pacers, trotters in Ohio, I think we're well represented thus far in all those categories. We can go over them a little bit more. You got um, No Chance in Hill, Gypsy Hill. Uh, we have a, a number of trotting Colts, trotting fillies that look very good in Ohio. And then even on the pacing side, uh, the Cowboy Horse is uh, a nice looking colt and then uh the philly uh, and those are just the ones off the top of my head um uh, venice blue chip the lather up philly We're, we'll be represented i think in all four categories pretty well this summer thus far now luck and change we'll see how it, how it happens but uh for right now very happy with these horses and no chance in hill has just looked awesome uh the last little while uh oh snap you talking about phillies this has been one of our top phillies just a beautiful philly does everything right the creatine philly paycheck princess is coming around now her gate she looks like she's got a really really powerful gate we'll see how she trains down also pickpocket the walnut colt both are walnuts drebin and pickpocket look very very good we'll see how they continue to train down prince charmer we're gonna give prince charmer a little hiatus that knee he didn't hit it hard enough but he must have given it a, a whack you know, a weird place because it blew up and, um, you know, we got him on antibiotics just to make sure there's nothing going on in the leg. We're going to cool it out. So he's got probably going to be missing from training sets for the next uh, two, three weeks, I suspect. But a beautiful gait and I think he'll be a nice horse for us. But now's the time to get that cleaned up and nipped in the bud. Uh, pull the shoes was awesome the other day. And I know that uh, Scott thinks quite highly of affection. And Amy, I don't know Amy beat him or just stayed with him down the lane. But he was surprised. He'd gone with pull, pull the shoes a couple times and said, man, I didn't know she was that good. He said, we were we were really making it. And he was, she was awesome. And Amy said, too, just a beautiful filly. So very happy to hear that about pull the shoes. This is the green shoe filly out of his sister to six pack. Uh, very happy with her. Punch the clock. Had the surgeon in the other day to look at her. Now they said because there was sur she had two surgeries, the the stomach wall she said is healing nice. Doesn't really want to see her on the jog uh, jogging with harness on for another couple of weeks. But in the walker doing some walking is fine. She is sharp. She almost got me yesterday. She almost kicked James going out to the walker. Uh, apparently when we were gone away and she almost got me coming off the walker yesterday. So it's not like we you know I'm just happy she's alive. But at some point hey it's not cool to almost kill other people. So just go easy and she's just sharp she's just sharp as attack and, and shiny and fat she looks great she looks fantastic so 
We'll see how uh, Punch the Clock progresses. Probably going to see her, let's say February 1st will be our aiming date to have her back going on the track. But she's working right now, and we can start jogging her slow towards the end of the month. So maybe when she starts back, if she's at 100%, it won't take too long to get her back training. Now, there's no schedule for this filly. I suspect somewhere, if everything goes right from here on in, somewhere around the middle of the summer is when we'll have her ready to go, and there's nothing wrong with that. Purple People Eater has been training awesome. Had a little PP on Jason the other day going under the wire, but that's uh, just hormones as we get into February, March. You're going to see the fillies start coming into season, some of them, and, you know, horsing a little bit. This filly, obviously, is on the front end of that. Um... Uh, ready for landing a horse we'd, I had x-rayed all over Saturday uh, no he's getting x-rayed tomorrow just want to make sure he's already keep coasting over on the left shaft and was being really rude the last week um, now is he just coming to that first hurdle where it's like you're not going to make me do anything and they find out that yeah I actually will or is it something bothering him I just want to make sure before I start you know giving him a full court press and really working him hard I want to make sure that it's not a physical thing I don't think it is uh, but I want to make sure. So Mike's going to go all over him. Dr. Latessa's is going to go all over him this week. Um, where are we at? Ready for landing? Really don't care. Has been awesome. Now she made a break the other day. Hit a little heel scratch. The filly's been lights out. Fantastic. This is the Chapter 7 filly out of a sister to When Doves Cry. Uh, just a, a really, really, really nice filly. Uh, Rito's, uh, Rito's Lady. Got the hobbles on. Danny, I haven't seen her pace with the hobbles on. I went with her the first day, and she kind of made breaks and goofed around. So I haven't really seen her, but he said she's pacing good now. Very interesting filly. Interesting in the sense that um, she came from a small area, right? Not a big herd of horses. So totally different mentality. It is different. When you see the horses that have come from smaller operations and then horses that have been in big herds, it is totally, totally different. So I'm interested to see how this filly is going to train down. She looks nice on the track though. You know, obviously I haven't seen her pace, but on the track trotting and when she was jogging around, I thought she looked very, very good. Uh, Royal Emeralds has come forward in a big, big way. She looks really nice on the track. Another green shoe filly that just need a little time. Seasons of Love looked good training the other day for Mario. Sedona Hill, another top filly for Ohio. I can give you at least three or four top fillies and top trotting colts that look very, very good so far. And Sedona Hill is amongst them. Uh, Southwind Digit, the bar hopping filly, has looked fantastic for quite a while and still um, very, very happy with her. Sunset Acres Girl. We can only talk about one Michigan bred filly because we only have one Michigan bred. Uh, she's doing her work very, very well. I don't know what the curve will look like in Michigan, but she is doing well in our sets with our other horses. So I can only imagine that she's ahead of the curve for Michigan, I would think. I don't mean to be rude or, or, or uh, sound arrogant in that regard, but she is trotting with our green shoes and our six packs and our tactical landings. So if she's keeping up and doing well and actually beating them in some senses in these sets, I suspect she'll do well in Michigan if she can continue this trend right through into the summer. Sweeney was fantastic the other day. Also, a lot of people asking Sweeney. I see his 15 shares haven't moved. They will soon enough when you guys get a look at this colt. This is a giant, giant Uncle Peter colt that looked very, very good the other day. Also, starting to get it, starting to understand his job, understand the group setting, the group mentality, how you move, how you sit. He's starting to get it. So super, super happy with Sweeney so far. Third and six bothered me. He was castrated. I want to talk about him right now. His attitude had to change. We caught him. He wasn't really nasty or mean. Just had that, I just don't care what you think, attitude. And that will change with castration, with work. He's just started over the first hurdle. We castrated him. I probably won't even train him on Wednesday. I want to get a very close look at him. Beautiful horse, beautiful gait. Just got to do your work right. And uh, he will from here on in. Time is on my side. Made a break yesterday on Jimmy. Uh, but he came in, he had some snot in his nose. He said he coughed once. Was he a little under the weather? Maybe. Maybe he was. But, man, uh, I want to go with this guy next week. But I love this horse. I think very, very highly of him. I can't wait to see him in a uh, setting at 100%. Union suit was good. Again, another trotting colt. This is Slim Jimmy's uh, full brother. He was really good. Vaquero Blue Chip flew under the radar for a while. That's going to come to an end. This is the father, Patrick, brother to Spider Blue Chip, and he looks really really good on the track. Venice Blue Chip, the Philly by Lather Up. Uh, it looks so far like Blue Chip was right. 
He put his money where his mouth was. He bought every single share that he could, and it looks good. Venice Blue Chip has been training very, very good. Those x-rays the other day only confirmed my suspicions that there isn't anything serious going on. Just got to paint those stifles. She's such a big filly, but man, she looks beautiful on the track. Um, Victory Blue Chip International Money Colt. He's close to being castrated just because he's so big and ornery. But he's not there yet. His work ethic is very, very good. And he looked great on the track the other day. Again, Watch Your Mouth continues to train down good. This is the full brother to Don't Believe Me, Just Watch. He's looked good on the track for quite a while now. Widespread Panic. Keep your eye on this horse. I told everybody there's shares still there. Uh, widespread Panic. Powerful, powerful, powerful colt. Joey Cramp goes with him, gets along with him. He said, man, this is a strong, strong animal. And he's fast. I agree with both statements. Winter Bells was great the other day, too. Amy went with Winter Bells and said, man, she's on the left line in the straights a little bit, but, man, can she ever pace? What a beautiful filly. No concerns with Winter Bells. James went with her. I went with her. She is fast. Nice filly. So, again, you know, you guys might say, come on, Anthony, they can't all be good. No, we do have some, some horses we really have to work on. I haven't seen AC Swan yet. Here, I'll go through the ones right now where I need them to elevate themselves a little bit. AC Swan. Like to Alibaba, haven't seen those two yet. And Tilly's Hanover's coming nicely again. Great work ethic, so I know he'll get there. Born to Dance, castrated him because of his work ethic. He will get there. Very happy with him. Did you know? Had OCDs out. She has to catch up. Um, electric line, those brakes will come to an end. Head pull, pull those hobbles in a little bit. No issues there, I don't believe. Uh, great bet. Just need to per put the work, the continued work into him. He's got a, the right work ethic, the right the right attitude, the right idea. He'll be fine. Green Tea's already made it to where we need him to be. Very happy with him. I'm fancy like. Also made it to where I need her to be right now. Very happy with her. Um, love back in action. Just got to get her appetite up. That appetite will result in weight. That weight will result in muscle, and she'll come forward. This all revolves around work ethic and attitude, and I'm very happy with those in both in, in this filly for sure. Uh, lovers play. The other day, the breaks pitched them. The filly's been fantastic. Melanie's Michaela. Horse that just has to do more work. Again, work, rinse, repeat. Work, rinse, repeat. We'll put the work into her and see if she comes forward. Um, mounds for all. A little bit lazy. It's not the end of the world. The horse, there's no reason. When I look at him, it's odd because his sister was a hothead. She wore a snake cord the day I raced her at the Meadowlands and she trotted in 55. Here her brother is, lazy bugger. All right, let's see what the lazy one can do. Uh, he won't be lazy forever. He'll come forward. Myself in this bar, again, work, rinse, repeat. Same as Melanie's Michaela. You just have to do work and, and put it into them and see how, see how they go, how they come along. Do they progress? Do they regress? If they start to regress then they're probably not going to be staying. So we'll see. Myself in this bar, I don't have an issue with any of these horses yet. Um, Prince Charmer, just got to work, get that lag down and give himself a poke. It's not the end of the world. He's got a great attitude. Uh, I really, really like Prince Charmer and have from day one. Um, Rito's Lady, just getting gated and training. Happy with her also. Uh, whew, I, you know, a lot of them are doing their work so well. That's it. That, that's it for any horses I need to look at. Now you know everything. Everybody that wasn't on that list that I just gave you is doing the work fantastic. And the horses on that list, it's just a matter of moving forward. As I said, that whole work, rinse, repeat, they'll do it. They're athletes. They'll come around. So with that, those are your two-year-olds. I get your three-year-olds and age horses to talk about in just a minute.